Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have a very interesting video here. Uh, this time working on a 2007 Merce Mercedes-Benz CLS 550. This is coming from a shop here in Virginia, Springfield, Virginia. Uh, that's all the information I have from them. Uh, I have the VIN number and a lot of information in here. You see that I have two computers in here. One on the left is mine. It's from a 2006 uh, GL 450 formatic, but the computers are the same. They're all ME 9.7. So the reason I have his in here is because he has problems with the fuel pump activation. This has a fuel pump relay, which is controlled by the computer and the fuel pump relay is on the rear sim i got a lot of, i have gathered a lot of information that i want to share so let me start the screen recording all right guys as you see i have this start the screen recording uh, let me go over to the first page uh, why is that going to let's see from sam i guess that's the first one from some location uh, i don't need that one Rear Sam, yes. All right, guys, um, as I usually do, let me start with information like that, because I want to share with all you how to check the computer if you are uh, having a problem with communication, uh, if you are trying to do a bi-directional test, because this is exactly the one, what I want to show here, and or if you are correcting your, your testing and everything is fine and you can send the computer to me. All right, so why do I have all this information? All this is coming from Identifix. It's all original information from Mercedes-Benz. So the rear SAM, again, I've been doing a lot of homework. All these are documents, PDF files that I have gathered to share with you. So if you're interested in learning how to work in Mercedes-Benz and how to read diagrams, how to test computers, do a bench test, or check your computer in your vehicle because all these tests that I do, you can check on the vehicle. Um, what do I need or what does, uh, what does this computer need in order to be power up? Well, I have those selected in here. We got powers, I got pin 16. Uh, this computer uses two connectors, one with 58 pins and one with 96 pins. Obviously, the big one is the one with more pins. Uh, for my testing, I don't need to do anything on this side, so everything has been done in here. And I even have, as you see, my multimeter connected in here, which I'm going to prove, uh, you know, that the fiber reference is good. Uh, he doesn't have any concern. He says that the car runs sometimes and runs good, and sometimes it's just it's a long crank and long crank and long crank, and it doesn't want to start until finally it builds pressure and he checked the computer uh, sorry the fuel pump and he said it's everything good so uh with i am um, top down i'm using the top down phoenix in here i can find the engine uh, serial code and the chassis code which is very important when you're looking for information and identifix you need to know the chassis code which is in this case 219.372 and the engine code 273.960 um, so I'm going to scroll up into this document and uh, not in this one actually this one is is made for the 219 which is you can see right here that's the chassis 219 so all these rear SAMs are probably the same the reason I have this document pulled up in here is because I wanted to read this the fuel pump relay N10 2KA it's located on the rear SAM control unit, but it's actuated by the ME, the DME or engine computer control unit N310. Remember that numbers, those numbers, N310 engine computer, N10 is the from SAM one, right? And then the rear N102, right? So, and then relay KA is the fuel pump relay. I'm gonna end the session on my scanner so because I just lost before the communication on the scanner and it was a um, Bluetooth but that's for another node all right so we now know that that is a direct wire from the DME to the rear SAM to control that relay so that's all I, need. I have this document in here so I'm going to close one by one uh, this is nice. You can see uh, the I can get uh, pictures, color pictures, and that is all coming from Identifix. I still got it pulled up in here. So if I go up to here, the, re the way I find this out is I just scroll and put, you know, entry 10 and then component locations. If I open this, you will see that that picture is right there. 
So that's, you can see pictures, I mean, a very high definition color picture. This is really good. And this is coming from original Mercedes-Benz. This is not, you know, Identifix, but I mean, it's good that they have it. You try to find this on, on uh, Mitchell or uh, snap on or um, all that time. No, this is the only one that has it. As you see, I have all the documents open in here. And this is the Diagnostics 07. You know, this is the pinouts on the computer. Um, as you can see, it says N310. And how I know this is the correct one, because if you see here, if I open this other one, and that's the reason I want to show this, you see it says N310, but it says four. So this is four, this connector, this computer doesn't have four connectors. That's the first hint. Um, the, this one is connector one. And then this is connector two, right? So two connectors, the connector one is the one that has 96 pins. I think it's 96 or 98. I, I don't want to look into that. And then the connector two is the one that has 58 pins. All right, going down into the wire diagrams, which I have also open in here. So again, how I find this out is with all these documents that I have open here. So, if I go into uh, this document where it, says, where it says, you know, what is included or what is attached to this computer for the ignition on, right? So we have, um, the, now we know the N102KA is a fuel pump relay, but it also says in here. So if you see right here on the left side, look at this arrow. I mean, I'm gonna move into the left side so you can see my uh, pointer right there, right? Because I don't know why PDF changes that every time. But then uh, all those informations are in here, so you can understand which one is the X11 Ford is the dialing connector, N310 is the engine computer, N101 is the front SAM, M3 is the fuel pump, Y62 are the injectors, and etc. Right? Uh, but how do I know this is the correct for my for my vehicle? Well, this is where these numbers are very important. You need to get this 273960. And if I look in here, it says right here, again, follow my arrow, almost top left corner, right? It says engine 273.960, and it says model 211 and 219. If you see the chassis, this is a model 219. So we are in the correct in the correct diagram. Uh, the reason I have this in here, let me see if I have, okay, yes. Uh, let me see, start diagnosis. I think this is just all I wanted for. Full memories. Uh, let me see the other one. You'll see me location. We can close that one. We already saw that. Fuel relay picture. This is again, uh, where just type NT, N10 slash 2KA. And I got this from Identifix. Really, really nice, huh? It tells me exactly what a picture. I don't know why they name it intercooler circular uh, circulation pump relay because it's not. It's, it's the actual. We know now they're, they're in, I mean, with an arrow and everything, what is located, right? And it tells you where uh, is in the in the rear SAM, which is, you can see that this is all cup rise, service repair information, and this is all coming from Mercedes-Benz. All right, so these are the same pinouts that I have uh, pulled out on the uh, web. I'm going to close it because those are a little hard to see. Same thing as these diagrams. And um, the reason I was able to find these diagrams, let me just keep closing documents that I don't need. Fuel pump actuation. Um, let me just make sure what we have here. Actuate the fuel pump with voltage with a via fuse. And that's, uh, I think this is a very minimal information so we can close that one. Um, fuel pump actuation again for all the models and uh, we have still got the N10 2KA and the uh, from Sam and all that stuff right so uh, the nice thing about these documents when you open those documents in Identifix all these red uh, numbers are hyperlinks and you can open those again based on model engine and blah 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 because otherwise you're going into the wrong vehicle make sure that you are when you are selecting that you are selecting the correct i also have the um, color wire diagram to see 
where uh, it's shown the wire diagram and it's correct the fuel pump relay activation is coming from uh, pin 17 on the DME and it shows us on a straight wire going over to the relay and things that I want to understand it because it doesn't show here if it is as a power ground uh, or a ground because it says pin 17 but then if I follow this other wire it's also shown um, it goes to the DME so um, these wire diagrams color are are good but they're not so helpful when you have that kind of that kind of situation this is just to know where the pins are on the connector this is the two different types of uh, engine computer for this uh, vehicle not specifically for the one we're using again for the one we're using is this one obviously the two connector but there is also another version that has five connectors and it's that not the case on here uh, again more values these are the values on um, the um, connector with 58 pins and it says to go to connector number one to look for this document if I'm an identifix and I click that, it's a hyperlink and it takes me there. The reason I have this open is because if I go over to the pin 17, and this is very important, I want you to see that. Um, okay, it is a power side activation or a ground side activation. Uh, based on what this manual is saying in here, it's telling me that um, all, um, all values measure to ground unless otherwise noted. I think this is actually incorrect in here. Fuel pump actuation is almost telling me that, okay, to connect my bolt, bolt meter, that's probably because maybe it's to back probe. That's the only thing that I will think of is to connect my probe into the uh, negative to pin four, which is in here. If I go to pin four, it's right here, it's, it's a ground. And then if I touch 17, it's 12 volts with the ignition on. And oh, sorry, with ignition and with the key on position one, I keep saying ignition, not ignition on, so that uh, will be not relay act actuated. All right, let me see what else we got here. Wire diagrams, which I'm going to show in a second on identifix. And the reason I don't do it in here is because when you save it as in PDF, you got all the coordinates and everything, but uh, the numbers become really blurry and they're pretty unusable because we need to see what is in here. And now with this image, we cannot. All right, more values of the DME. And this is one that I want to share in a second. All right, so going into information, I also have, um, let me see, as uh, in Protoman. Let me just go slow because you guys are going to uh, request or tell me, well, how do you know it was the X, like this document number, diagram uh, 2101XAE, and then the one uh, on here, because you saw that it's very more in here. Like if I open this one, um, this one has also the N310. But I want you to see this, you see connector five, connector four. So this is definitely not the correct computer. If I open the one I have open, this is talking about the 96 pin. The only reason I have this open, well, this one open the 96 pin again, we don't need it for what we are doing, but I wanna show you how I know that I don't need it. All right, so if I, uh, let me just move this over to the top, perfect. And now we can move this in here with the bar on the bottom. So let's go over to the front, right? So I want you to see this right now, at least in here, I can put this uh, red arrow so you understand what I'm looking at. So all in here is for the connector with 96 pins. And then I'm looking at these, these letters in here. This is a lean, uh, I don't know what that is, and I don't really need to know. What I'm looking for is for terminal 30, terminal 15, terminal 87, uh, communication and stuff like that. You know, I don't need, I don't see that. Um, I can really, if I want to know more of what is in here, okay, well, what is S43? Well, I can go to, oh, let's A161. A161 is right NOx sensor. Okay, well, those are sensors. So I am not really looking into prove any sensors or check any sensors in here, right? Uh, what is M? M are usually motors, so M166. If I go over to here, M16 M16 sex six is throttle valve actuator. Okay, so that's the throttle valve 
throttle valve actuator. Sorry, guys, it's late at night. I've been working very hard all day in different computers, and I'm trying to share this information with you because otherwise I will not be able to do it during the week. But yeah, so all that is there. If I scroll all the way to this side slowly, and this is what I usually do because, I mean, I'm trying to see what is on this connector because I'm looking for powers and grounds and communication and uh, fiber reference, uh, the fuel pump relay actuation and so on, right? Because I want to confirm what I have on the wire diagram, you know, color wire diagram and compare it to here and see if it's true or not, right? So there is nothing in here, so I can close this. Now, if we go over to the other diagram, this is the one with the connector of 58 pins, W153. What is W153? It's all here. Grounds. W15 slash 3, ground electronics. Perfect. So you guys are learning with me. Anything that you see that has this right here, make sure that you focus where I'm having that arrow. Uh, terminal 31, ground. Those are European terms for terminals. 30 is constant power. 15 ignition 87 is power with like with the key on let's say it's not uh how can i say that um it's not like you know terminal 30 will have power always no matter what the condition of the key is or not but this terminal 87 it can usually it usually comes from another relay if we follow this it's coming actually from n101 what is the n101 the front sam so this will not have power unless the n10 uh sorry the front sam sends that power in there and most likely is coming from a relay okay if we keep looking in here air start so this is a star signal I'm not sure what's that terminal 61. If you guys, any that are watching this video know what terminal 61 is, I should have looked and in, 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 do a search for this, but I couldn't find it. All right, so we got five balls and a negative. Okay, what is this? Okay, B43. Let's let's take a look what that B43. That's gotta be a sensor. B43 fuel tank pressure sensor. So that's interesting because now I know in this B43 again right here, if I go up. Okay, this is the signal, this is the negative, and this is the five volts. Do I have everything now that I need? That's exactly what I'm connected. So if you see this page right here, nine sensor ground and 22 five volt reference. That's it. Now I also see that I have in pin 29, K line, if I go down, X114, what is the X114? We already know that is the DLC and that's pin seven on the DLC, but let's go over to the legend, to the legend X114. Cause you got all that information in here, H X114 data link connector. All right, so, but we have also uh, 41 and 54, cause I need to come bus 41 and 54. So let's see if we find those. Right here, uh huh. Right here, can high, can low. It tells me everything I need. Where are those connectors? To the gateway. And then, if you go over to this X35, uh, again, go over to the legend, and you will find the reason I don't need to go over to the gateway is because I have all those wires in here, and I connect it to it. Right? Okay. So this is how you read the diagrams. Um, I want also to take you over to um, what I have put as bookmarks. All right, let me go over to bookmarks and then component description. Now search all through electrical components. This is always what you want to look for because in here, um, well, electrical components, let me look for other ones, overall network now, control unit component description. Um, hmm. show why is just showing partial search fuse assignment component description for crankshaft no search of wire diagram yeah right here search of wire diagrams these are the ones that we need to look for so base how did i find found that um diagram for the dme or the engine computer right here on these documents, I have to, you know, look for, okay, I'm looking for uh, 
the engine computer, right? So let's go scroll down. Uh, let me see right here. Gas gasoline direct injection control unit. Uh, let me see, 272, no, our car is not a 272, right? So we are here, we are a 273, so that's not the one. Um, let me see, gasoline injection and ignition, 113, 219, well, model 219, this might be, but let's keep scrolling down right here. You see, engine 273, as 1606 remember this is a 2007 and model 219 boom that's the one that's it this two right here that's how i found it you know and then you can copy this number you put that number up in the tab and it will tell it will take you over to the wire diagrams and that's how i found it yes guys this is a lot of information this is a lot a lot of search the more and the more you do this you get more familiar uh, things that I give from uh, all data, all data will, you know, as soon as you put the big number, it will tell you uh, which uh, vehicle is this. So let's say right here, if I put this into all data, um, then we can see that this is a 219.372 and 273.960. All right, guys. So, but yeah. We do have everything now that we need for information. This is how you look. If you only have identifix, then you can read this in here. Uh, well, in this case, I have the, the incorrect computer because I have right now working on that one. But so that's how you gather the information, All right? So now the next thing that I want to do is do a test. Uh, signals that I have already on the screen, as, as you can see, the blue channel is a fuel point relay, pin 60 out out seven on the TLE 6244X, the TLE 6244 is this a smart IC, this just con not just control the fuel pump, we control the injectors and some other things, and it's on a smart um, device. You'll see the data sheet in a moment. And then uh, the command of the microprocessor or from the microprocessor, to pin 61 in seven of the same IC. All right, now this is now what I want to share with you. This is the data sheet. So we have in the data sheet is telling me uh, which output seven is and which input seven is. How I know it isn't there? Well, I put a wire onto pin 17, the same wire that I have here. I have uh, the multimeter in continuity and I just start rubbing the 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 uh, multimeter lead in continuity and then beep 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 and a beep right here so I know now that's uh, that's the correct IC and I can prove that now too all right so we can see also schematics in here a little bit more so it tells me you know how the outputs work like output seven Turn the power stage on an on via serial SPL via parallel control unit, except output 17 and 18. Well, let me look for output 7. These are power stages out uh, right here. Okay, whoa, 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 right here. Output 7 and 8, 17 and 18. Four low side power switches for nominal currents up to 1.1 amps. Stage 7 is not in burden. Stage 8 is in burden. So this is just going to be the way you will see uh, the one and the zero, right? So it's active or, or, or inactive. For more information on that, look online on how that works. But we can see here the input seven controls output seven. So this is an schematic of the internals of that 64 pin um, controller. Uh, let me see if I have more in here. So this is Again, this is a uh, 18 channel a smart low side switch. And this is this is what you have. This is what I exactly what we have here. All right, so going down again to the pins, since I know now which pins I'm going to check. All right, so just scroll with me. I mean, stay with me just one second. Pin 60, I don't need to check it because I know that I am in the correct pin. But now pin 61, I do. So this is what I have here on the screen. I have to put you guys, um, let me get a, a tripod 
so I can do this a little better um, so just bear with me I don't even know how I'm going to put you here I hope I don't press the button to stop the, the video <laughs> sometimes it happens okay it didn't happen okay perfect because I don't want to stop the video all right perfect so that is good now I'm going to keep you there I did all the explanation we're going to do the first test on this computer well first I got a test light attached to the same output I'm going to go over to the scanner since I already select the vehicle switch the ignition on I'm just going to tell you what is happening on the scanner and keep you focused in here or I'm going to go over to the ECM uh, yeah ECM I'm entering the ECM ignition on again questioning I'm going to go over to the actuation test and this is what I wasn't sure if I wasn't going to be able to do it or not because when I said M3 fuel pump when I select that it says test prerequisite coolant temperature higher than 80 degrees and engine running I'm like okay no, I don't have any neither one I can put the coolant temperature but I cannot have the engine running because I don't have the immobilizer I don't have the key I mean okay let's see I click OK either way when I click OK on there, I have two options. F3 will turn that on, and F4 will turn that off. All right, so I'm turning this on, and boom. In that computer, works good. I'm turning it off, and it goes off. All right, so now let's, let's take a look at the same thing, but now I'm going to have this running. Um, I don't need the values. You can see the values in here for now, but I'm going to remove too many lines on the on the screen. So for this test, I have on the output a non um, um, attenuated lead because that's the output. But in order for me to touch here, you know, I'm going to go over to pin 61. Uh, make sure I'm saying that. Yeah, pin 61, which is the command coming from the microprocessor. I got to be very careful. So I'm using this very tiny and attenuated uh, lead. All right, so I'm there. Right now, this is off. So it, when this is off, we have, okay, battery voltage, uh, obviously, because the uh, power is coming from a fuse and the computer is controlling the, the ground side, right? So since it's not grounded, we'll always see is the power going through the filament of that bulb in a way to get grounded, right? But okay, so on pin 61, let me just do that again very carefully. All right, on pin 61 on the TLE 6244X, when, uh, okay, that's no good because it's channel is a yellow channel when that is off we're reading half a bolt pretty much you see right there okay i'm going to command that on with f3 and now we see the light confirmation that is on and now we are and now like the blue channel is pulled pretty much to ground and what is the yellow channel doing same thing zero volts so that pin 61 has to be down and zero in order for that test light to come on the reason i'm doing this test is because if i go here and i don't have that pull to ground there is no way that the light will come on but if i go now onto this computer and i do this test and i have that actuation on on and the test light is not being pulled to ground this i see is bad but do we have a problem on the IC or we have a problem on the computer control side, the microprocessor side? This is what I'm doing this test and this is very important, okay? All right, so now I'm going to disconnect the scanner from this computer. Let me just, uh, okay, we turn that off. I'm going out in here, turning the computer off completely. I'm getting out of the diagnostic session because obviously we're going to change vehicle. Now I'm going to grab the camera in a second so you guys can see now the scanner because I want to share that with 
with all of you. Uh, let me just, before I move this away, uh, to show you that, oops, that is the bin number that we had before. And as you can see, it says it's a yield for 50, 2006. All right, so let me put you back where you were so I can do all the, all the disconnecting in connect and connecting the other computer. So bear with me right there. All right, so this is going to be very quick because I got everything prepared. And that's the reason I have two harnesses and everything ready to go. So I got to go over to pin 17, which is the fuel pump relay. Again, the same thing that we have in there. And I have that ready. I'm going to disconnect this harness from here. And I can now move this computer away from my desk. I don't need this no more. Well, I can leave that in there just to protect that wiring from shorting or anything. We don't want that, right? Okay, so let me move this computer just a little closer to here. We're going to connect uh, the harness to the universal adapter. Now we can also turn this on because with this computer, I have the fiber reference also being, um, we can see it. So, all right, so we are re ready to go. Let me just get out of here and I'm going to turn this on. Immediately, you can see we got five volts. That's a good sign, right? Hopefully you guys can see that very good because yes. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is now do an uh, auto scan. And I have in here on this page his B number. So last digit 96545. That's a good sound. CLS class. And then 096545, 096545. So that is his computer, 100%. So we have very good communication. And we're going to do the same test. All right, so. Let me just move this a little bit this way so you guys can see that in there. All right, so before, let me just, I'm sorry, the, I'm going back and forth, but I want to show you all the process in the scanner since I didn't on the other computer. So you can see what I'm about to do. Uh, come on. I really like uh, top down in this one. We are going to select 06 as 06 2006 because the other ones are older. 219.372. That's exactly what I was showing you guys. 219.372. This is nice that you can read that here, right? Click the ignition on. We're going to scroll. When you're using the top down, you can either scroll here or you can go to system list and look for the engine computer, ECM, and you can enter either way is the same thing. You can go control module programming, replace, or other things that you can do here. And here we're gonna go over to actuation test. M3 fuel pump. You see what I mean? Pre pre test prerequisite. Coolant temperature above 80 degrees Celsius and engine running. Uh, not really, we don't need that. All right, so I'm going to click in here. Uh, we're going to click that and it's gonna show us active, but we don't have any fuel pump activation. Need it in there, because if we now, let me put you guys in here. Uh, let me, oh, it just came on. You see that? <laughs> That's all good because this is exactly what he is experiencing. A long time to come on. I'm so happy, but you see, this is like 100% to reproduce his concern. Now, the only thing that I want to see, because, okay, well, uh, the fuel pump is on. So we know now that definitely that pin 61 will be also on. I'm going to be very careful because I'm doing this with my glasses. But yeah, we can see there is being pulled to ground. 
I'm going to turn it off. Hmm. I didn't see any change on that. Am I the correct one? Because it's showing zero. Let me move this meter from here so I can pull my, um, we already saw that the fiber, fiber reference is good in there. So let me just make sure. So 61, I think is in here. Okay, yes, I was in the wrong, in the wrong pin. Cause I'm like, well, that has to be high. It cannot be low. And then uh, the, the, the test light is off, All right? So let's do again. And it's not working properly. I need it to fail now. All right, so let's turn this off because right now his computer is working as it's supposed to. Let's get out of here. And that is just normal. I have to turn the computer off for a second to get uh, to do that again. Let me just turn about this back on and we can see that we have no actuation on the yellow state on the yellow. Uh, the, the blue is really easy to, to see. So we can now half a bolt. I'm going to go try to do the actuation again and see the response to make sure if it's the IC or it's no command from the microprocessor. So I'm doing it now and it's working again. <sighs> Let me turn everything off because this is exactly what he's saying. You know, he is saying that this is intermittent. I need this to happen here. So he's saying everything off and I lost communication with the scanner. So let me just do one more time going on to the ECM. I need this to fail. Actuation test. I'm just selecting everything because I turned everything off. So I'm selecting everything back on. And it's working perfectly. Come on. We can see the change in there. And now that's, you know, as soon as I get off, I got the switch technician off in order to uh, that relate to deactivate. But we can see the command is being done by the microprocessor. It's not just a computer doing weird things. Hopefully you guys can see the bright of the light. Um, I'm not sure where I can put it. So you guys can see, trying to keep my hand not too much in the way. Got my glasses in here. So let me see that what you guys are seeing. Can move this out of the way. I need just that for the light. Maybe right there, so you can see the test light when it comes on. All right, I'm going to command it on. I can definitely see that it did work. All right, let's leave it on for a little bit and see what it does. But we can see immediately, I mean, I'm in the right test. This is the 100% test. I'm so glad that we cached that on the video when it wasn't working and then it worked. The only thing I would have liked to have that exact moment, it was these right there. Then I would not need to be here. Because if he, that um, signal was not was there and not this light, well, then I know this is the IC. But now I don't know. <laughs> and this is why you do tests. All right, so let's deactivate it. And it's off. One more time on. And it's on. I'm just going 
function uh, function three, function four, on and off, just just like a switch. To see if you one time the, the light doesn't come on and the command is there. You just think about like this is like a relay. We're on the command on the command side. Okay, that took a little longer to respond. Let me stop that one second. Okay, that's very good. Because we saw a delay in there, right? You see right here? We got a delay, but the signal was there. Ha ha ha. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly what I want. See guys, this is this is the power of the oscilloscope. How can you see that without having an oscilloscope? There is no way. There is no way you can do it. So let me move the lines. Now we can separate these two a little bit. Let me move the general channel down. But we can see here that the command on the IC, as we have before, if I go, I mean, we can see it right here. The command is still there, but then boom, now until here, the light came on. So we got a delayed on this activation of that fuel pump relay of 3.5, 3.4 seconds. That's excellent. That's excellent, excellent. So let me save this folder because I want to save this for my records and his records. All right, so save this. I'm going to put this, okay, so yeah. Um, uh, this is going to be test with a scanner and fail. I'm just going to save the current, the current one. Fail to activate, activate for uh, the delta 3.4 seconds. So. Let's say three and a half, yeah, 3.4 seconds, four, three seconds, three seconds. I like I remember. But yeah, though, this is excellent. We catch, we catch it, we catch it, we catch it. That's exactly what I want. Communication with the vehicle computer got interrupted. Please confirm the diagnostic connector is connected. Let me just make sure because let's go to the ECM. I'm entering the communication again. It is, it is communicating, so not a problem. Just gotta be careful moving wires in here. So we can run this again. We catch it one time, we can catch it two times. Let's see what it's going to do. Make sure I'm in the one correct wire pin. It's a little hard for me to see there. Let me just double check the pin out. So um if it is it's half a half a bolt i know the correct one yet yeah, i am in the correct one so all right so that is the correct pin you guys can see the test light in there so i'm going over to actuation tests i am entering the test i'm have not actuated yet you will see it on the yellow can on the yellow uh on the yellow channel just to stay put to, to the yellow channel we know that we're not missing that one we're not really missing at all Hmm. It's active. Okay. No fuel pump and not it's no actu it's not being actuated. Okay, this is this is no good. Let's keep let's keep it here. Because we know it will come on eventually. But we got no actuator, no signal coming from the microprocessor. Is this a protection or not? Let me get out of here. 
it looked like I did try. You see that? Because it, it went a little low compared to Yeah, it's going a little low, but not completely low. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can read full codes, just to make sure that I am indeed in communication. I am reading full codes. Uh, clear the DTC. I got a switch technician off. I got find more reference. I'm gonna let it go to sleep. Okay, now I went to sleep. Now it's clearing the full memory. Wait, wait 10 seconds. All right, power on again. All right, initiating, clear from memory completed. All right, so let's go back. Let me read the full codes. I got some other code, but it, I mean, it looks like the scanner has communication. All right, let me just double check that I am in the correct pin. So I have to be on the one, two, three, because that's the only worry I have by doing it with the glasses is that I might not be on the correct wire, but I think I am correct point. So right here, this is pin three. And this is, you know, the third one where I am is 61 right here. And we can see that voltage. Hmm. Uh, read actuation test. M3. Not active yet. Let's keep focusing on to that yellow channel. F3. Active. And nothing happened. We can see. Let me just stop that one second. So we got a problem here. Uh, so we have a not a, a bad IC, guys. Something else is happening. We don't have just a bad IC here. Make sure it's not getting warm. And I don't see why we get warm because it's not really the problem. But um, if I zoom in here, uh, let me. I'm getting tired. But if I zoom in here, does this? This is where the actuation let's say took place, uh, we have a drop. It seems like it's trying to actuate it, but you see it's going only, only this much. Not enough to pull that driver, because remember this is a, a, a switch driver to make the fuel pump come on. Is that the driver problem? No, because remember, this is the input, that is the output. The output is the one we have in blue channel, and this is the input. So the input is coming from the microprocessor. So this is this is this is no good news. This is definitely not good news. All right, let me turn it off. Let me run this in here again. This is definitely not good news. The problem is internally in the computer now. Not a driver or a P driver. Well, this is actually both. You have the pre-driver and the driver in there because this is a smart IC. This is not an old style computer. I guarantee you that from here, we're going straight to the microprocessor. Oh uh, yeah, this is not gonna work. Okay guys, this is not a good news from this computer. Um, I hope that you see how important it is to perform a full test. I am sharing so much information in here that uh, I hope that you all that are watching this video take in consideration. This is a very, very good diagnosis study. This is actually a full class in how to perform a test on a computer, how to read wire diagrams in European models, and uh, perform a test internally in the board. This is the same. I mean, this is realistically like you checking a relay on a car. Uh, yes, this is smaller, but if you understand the, the theory of operation and how the system works, and you can find a data sheet for a component like I did, uh, this is not, 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 not much of a difference from a relay. You got a, a control side and you got the output side. 
yes, we're, we are lucky or I'm lucky that I have that other computer that I can see exactly what it needs to, what needs to, in order to actuate. We saw the computer working for a little bit and now it's not working. It's active right now, it's not doing anything and we have no fuel pump actuation. 5.0 reference is good. I got you know plenty of communication um, and it's not working. It did work for a little bit, but now it's not working. So yeah, I think I'm going to stop the video here. I think I have shared, let me just do a, a finish conclusion of the video for all of you. Uh, thank you so much for visiting the channel. I am trying always to share as much as possible the knowledge that I have to a point that I don't affect my business. And this is what I want to also all you understand but i do take the time to give hints of good foundation pretty shortly uh, not this year i will be starting a class uh, uh, in person or online i haven't decided really yet how i'm going to do that but i want to start a class i'm going to start a process of like teaching how to repair electrical components how to become a real good diagnostician because the reason I'm so good on this is because I am a very good diagnostician too. Like I said, this is not a big difference compared to a relay a computer on the vehicle right here. Like if we analyze the system as a, as a whole in the vehicle, you have the main brain being the computer, the engine computer, which is the one at the end the car needs to keep running. But right now we got all these peripherals, all these other modules that are interconnected, like the ABS module, the transmission module, the steering, etc. right? So those are the same as in here on the computer. This computer, the microprocessor, will take all the sensor signals and the actuators and make that engine run, right? So if I see um, the way the computer works in here, the microprocessor for me will be like the engine computer as a, in a bigger scale, right? And then the microprocessor will be that same engine computer, small. All the sensor signals are reaching the microprocessor. All the actuators are not directly to the microprocessor, but are controlled by the microprocessor. That's where we have the drivers, the pre-drivers. On these new computers, we have a smart drivers like this 18, uh, what's the name of this one? Uh, let me just go up to the top. 18 channel smart low side switch. Uh, as you can see, I mean, I think I have another one, uh, but this one you can manage or I can drive even injectors and sort of things because it has, as we can see here, if I go down into the folder, um, you can see the amperage. I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to read and you're in my way, but we can see the outputs one, two, five, and six can manage up to 2.2 amps. 3 and 4, 2.2, 7 and 8, 1.1, 9 and 10, 2.2, and so on. So we can see in the clamping is very high. So these are very, very capable drivers, uh, switches. Uh, that's what a driver, a MOSFET is. It's just a switch, right? So um, this is the way they're doing now. So the microprocessor will have a command over to this IC, the one we were just seeing, and then... Uh, an output going on to the injector, the relay, whatever is that is attached to that driver. So they are, this is the same as if you're in the vehicle. Now the computer is sending this signal over to that relay, right? The fuel pump relay. So we have in that fuel pump relay, we got the power and we have now the control side coming from the computer, which is a ground. So again, in a small version, that relay right there is almost the same thing as in this IC. And this is what I'm trying to share. I take the time to gather all the information, trying to make the videos as short as possible. And I know that they're long, but this is a very good information. This is not something you can do and disclose in five minutes and 10 minutes. No, if you're really looking forward to understand and learn electronics or uh, electrical diagrams to become a very good diagnostician, you are in the right channel. You are seeing the right person. I can definitely take you there. All right, guys, um, thank you so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.